Hi, everybody. It's Mr. Steve again. I'm so happy you have joined me for another episode of Fairy Tales and Stories. This is our second episode. If you missed last week's episode, it was about the three little pigs, and it was really fun. If you want to watch it, you can go to my YouTube channel, which is called The ABCs with Mr. Steve, and you can find it there. But today we have a sweet fairy tale that we're going to talk about, and it is called Hansel and Gretel. After we read this story, we are going to make something really sweet ourselves. Now this story was written a long time ago by the Grimm brothers, and it's been written retold by Nadia Higgins. She retold the story, and she made it like a rhyming story. And it was illustrated by Marco Guadalupe, an illustrator draws the pictures. So let's see what happens here. Yeah, it looks good. Right. Have you ever walked through a deep, dark forest? It can feel magical. It can feel a little scary, too. Hansel and Gretel captures that feeling. This tale goes back hundreds of years. Let's get lost in the shadows of the woods. Are you ready? Hansel and Gretel went deep in the woods. Fear not, sister, said Hansel. I have a way to mark our path. And as they walked, he scattered bread. Through mossy paths, they dropped the crumbs, but hungry birds ate up their trail. All around them, darkness fell. We're lost forever, Gretel wailed. Hansel and Gretel lost in the woods, every tree and path unknown. Brother and sister stick together. You can find your way back home. The next day dawned with bird song bright. The children squinted up ahead. What was that? No, could it be? A real house made of gingerbread. Hungry, Gretel licked the roof while Hansel nibbled on the floor. They did not see the old hunched witch with red eyes standing at the door. The witch locked Hansel in a cage. I'll feast on roasted boy, she spat. As for you, she said to Gretel, you will feed him till he's fat. Hansel and Gretel lost in the woods, every tree and path unknown. Brother and sister stick together. You can find your way back home. Stick out your finger, said the witch, when Hansel's cheeks were plump and red. But that old witch could barely see, so the boy held out a bone instead. Still thin, she shrieked, I'll stew your bones. She lit the oven, hot flames swirled. To Gretel then she slyly called, please check the fire for me, girl. Gretel fibbed, I don't know how for she sensed a wicked plan. Lazy girl, I'll show you now. And the witch leaned towards the flames, then slam. As the witch burned to a crisp, the cage snapped open on its own. We're free, the children danced and sang, all through the woods and to their home. Hansel and Gretel, lost in the woods, every tree and path unknown. Brother and sister stick together and you can find your way back home. And that's the end of that story. Now, do you think that's a real story? No, it's a fairy tale. It's pretend. But I thought that was a fun story to read only because what was the witch's house made out of? Gingerbread, right? And lots of candy? Well, I thought it would be fun for us to make our own witch houses right now, but we can make them as fun as we want to. Okay, so we have some of the things that we're going to use to make our witch gingerbread house. Now, we do not have gingerbread right now to use, so graham crackers work really well. And if you decide to make this at home, this will give you some ideas on what you could do, but I'd love for you to use your imagination and try to find different kinds of foods and candies around your house that would make for a really great witch's house. Now, we have the graham crackers here, and we could use the graham crackers by themselves to build the house, but I did have this old small milk carton that works out really well because then I can just glue 
the graham crackers to this to make the base of the house. Now, in order to make the graham cracker stick, you could use frosting if you wanted to, but I have some fluff here, and fluff works really, really, really well as glue. So I'm going to stick in knife there and put a little bit here. I'll put a little bit on all four sides, and then we'll get started. What's your favorite kind of candy? I like lots of candy. I like Reese's Pieces. I like Reese's Peanut Butter Cups. I like chocolate. Caramello, those are good. I like Skittles. I like M&Ms. All right, so put one there, and then one there. See how well they stick with the fluff? The fluff is such a good job sticking, it's almost like glue. The only problem is when it gets stuck on you. Hey, that rhymed. Glue and you. I said, the fluff sticks really well. It's like glue, except when it's stuck on you. All right. So you've got a few different parts of the house. There are the four walls. That's, those are important parts of the house. We need to make the roof. How are we going to do that, you wonder? Well, let's find out if we can figure out a good way to do it. I'll put some here. And the green plate that I'm using this on has two purposes. One purpose is that it makes it so I don't make a mess on the table. That's probably the most important purpose. But while it's doing that, you know what else it can be doing? It can be acting like the yard. So I'm going to make this like the yard, too. So I can put other stuff on the yard if I want to. That looks good. All right. And let's see here. Maybe I'll just put a little piece right here, like that. And everything might not stick. It's OK if it doesn't. If it falls off, you can make a choice whether you want to try to put it back on again or just leave it off. Whatever you would like. Do you know why it's whatever you would like? Because it's your witch's house. And you can do it any way you want to. Okay. That's looking like a good house right now. I bet you Hansel would definitely be trying to eat some of this here. Well, this is where the candy comes into play. Have some good candy options. will make for a nice colorful house. I have some rainbow sour bites that I was looking to use on the roof because I think that would make a really colorful roof. And who doesn't like a colorful roof, right? We all like colorful roofs. Colorful roofs. That's hard to say. Try saying colorful roofs five times in a row fast. Colorful roofs, colorful roofs, colorful roofs, colorful roofs, colorful roofs, colorful roofs. Does that sound good? I'm not sure. All right. Let's see here. Oh, yeah, that's looking very colorful. Very colorful. And who doesn't love color, right? I love color. The witch obviously loves color. Hansel loves color. You think Gretel loves color, too? I think so. That was pretty neat the way they tried to trick her. Good thing she couldn't see very well because otherwise she would have tried to eat Hansel. And that would have been a very sad thing. He had a pretty good idea to make sure he would not get lost by putting down all the breadcrumbs. You remember what happened to the breadcrumbs though? Yeah, they got eaten by those birdies. Got to be careful with birds. Birds are very, very, very tricky with how they like to eat breadcrumbs. So if you're using breadcrumbs as your marker, you might they want to think twice about that. Good things a lot of times a lot of trails have um, trail markers on them, so you can look at the tree and find out where you're going. And you know Hansel and Gretel didn't have this at the time. But now, we have phones that have GPS's on them that will tell us exactly where we're going. So they would easily have been able to find their way home. Speaking of that, 
What do you think they were doing walking alone like that without a grown-up? I hope you wouldn't do that. And I think you would definitely be with your grown-up. And I think they learned their lesson too. It's kind of scary to learn your lesson that way. But I don't think they're going to go off again without a grown-up. All right. Now that, my friends, looks like one colorful roof. Part of the fun and part of the challenge is keeping everything to stay up. Look at that. Beautiful. Beautiful. I'm going to use some Twizzler pull-in peels, and I'm going to make the entryway to the house. So I'll put a little glue down there, put a little glue down there, like that. Oh, yeah. Nice. And then what about some gumdrops? Gumdrops would be a good choice over here, don't you think? I'm going to do them on one part of the house. I'll put them like this. And imagine that afterwards I'll be putting these all around the house. But we want to make it a very special door. I think Hansel would have loved to have tried to eat this house. All right, I'll put a few more on the middle here. Yeah, and the absolute best part about making houses out of candy is that you, just like Hansel and Gretel, would be able to eat it. All right, so I'm going to keep working on this, but I do want to tell you that we are just about over with our time today for our Fairy Tales and Stories program. I hope you love my house. I hope that you get a chance to make a house too. And even more importantly, I hope you get a chance to eat it. I'll see you next time. Goodbye.